I got an early look at Kingdom Come 2 Deliverance, which is coming out this year in 2024. And these are my first impressions. And I really want to see this game do even better than the original game from Warhorse Studios. So if you want to help make that happen, tell me your favorite thing about the gameplay in the comments below. And if that's too much to ask, just leave a like on the video. That really helps push it out to the YouTube algorithm so other people can hear about this new medieval game coming from Warhorse Studios. But now, let's take a look. Without further ado, I welcome you to Bohemia in the year 1403. I welcome you to Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. Here we go. Oh, man. Is that Pebbles? They brought back Pebbles. Everyone got so angry because I never changed my horse in the original game. Just kept the starter horse for the entire game. When it seems you're out of luck. Music gives me shivers still. There's just one man who gives a fuck. A friend will never leave you stuck. Oh, this is a Prague, that's the Royal Bridge. Now who can that friend be? Henry's come to see us. If he says I'm feeling quite Henry, a hero Henry. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, but now we can finally show you Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm only gonna roll the trailer now. Get Rex. It's a town boy. No, it's not. Ooh. This game just looks beautiful, still. Whoa! I always dreamt of leaving this place. It looks massive! Becoming more than a peasant. Never. the trouble with an adventurous life. It can end before it gets started. It's so big! These battles look huge! Congratulations, Sir Knight! You finally become a man. Wake, Wake up. up! Pull yourself together, Henry. The nightmares from the first game. Whoa. The combat still. Oh, they added crossbows! Could be a stealth archer, finally. Nobody will hand anything on a platter to men like you and me. You still have a long way to go till your work is done. Go, go. Is that a thunderbus? <laughs> oh my god, there's so much to oh, unpack. Merciful in that. God. Be kind and protect us so we don't blow our arses off. Amen. <laughs> In scope, this looks like it's the scale they wanted to do originally, and now they've had the money to do it. Hello and welcome. My name's Tom McKay, and together with Luke Dale, we're here to present the first in-depth look at Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, That's an Henry action and RPG set in a realistic world of the late Middle Ages. We're in Kuttenberg, a gorgeous city at the heart of Europe, but also at the heart of KCD 2. 
it's actually a to scale medieval city. And just so you guys know, we will be doing another video where we do a full breakdown. So let's take you into the world of the game with the help of Warhorse, the creators of this medieval saga. It's let's almost go. exactly 10 years since I was doing a video like this, uh, introducing our new game. It's almost exactly six years since this game called Kingdom Come Deliverance was finally released. So now it's perfect opportunity to show you what we have been working on those six years, which is Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. And where else to do it than in this magnificent cathedral in this royal city of Gutenberg, where the majority of this game takes place. Back then, 10 years ago, at the beginning, it was only 11 of us in a small office. Now it's 250 people working very hard for years to bring you the ultimate medieval RPG adventure. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 follows the adventures of Henry, a young lad who barely survives the invasion of a raiding force on his village. Henry embarks on a quest of revenge against those who butchered his family and burned his home to the ground. As a trusted squire and friend to young Sir Hans, our hero Henry is sent on a simple mission, but things turn ugly very soon. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is a continuation of Henry's previous adventures, but the story's written in such a way that it's perfect for newcomers to Henry's journey. But I know I always get this question. If you've not played the first game, you just need to play it. It's one of the best medieval RPGs I've ever played in my life. It's still one of my favorite games today. And it's not like an outdated old game. It's still very playable. But the story's written in such a way that it's perfect for newcomers to Henry's journey. Henry is a character that I think everybody can identify with because he starts off as a kind of nobody and goes through life with all these immense challenges. And I, th I feel like everybody can relate to that. Hans is all the kind of fun times and all the kind of ebullience and joy that Henry has in himself, but it takes a bit of accessing, and I think Hen Hans really helps him to do that. Whew. You were right about our stench. <laughs> Let's hope this water isn't too cold. You wouldn't want your pride and joy shrinking. <laughs> I'm more worried about it being too deep. Come on. Everything's mo capped as well. What we are making now is what it was supposed to be in the beginning, but we were not able to do it because we didn't have enough resources and experience and all, all that stuff. We've proven that the concept works, and now we can take it to another level, which we always wanted. The game is much bigger in scope. Original game we had I don't know, three hours of cutscenes, now we have more than five. Regarding the size of the world, it's two times bigger than it was. What? The story is longer and much more epic. So yes. previously it was about an issues of small nobility with bandits in their villages. Now it's uh, about problems of kings. This is a behemoth of a game in comparison to the first in my opinion and just to say and if you've not played the first game just to tell you it isn't just about the main story there's so many other things going on in the world which i feel like they've not really mentioned yet but it's not a linear story it's also an open world role play game as well behemoth of a game in comparison to the first in my opinion i think it's i think it's got so much more energy and pace and adventure and action and fun and and trial and tribulation and just everything that you could want from setting up the characters so beautifully in the first game and then throwing them out there and going, right, let's see what you're made of. This is going to be so much fun. Yes. Henry is a young guy, so he's not really like so deeply entrenched in his already, you know, set character traits. So you can build your Henry in a different ways. And that all means that it's actually on you who you want to be. You can save the world. Or we can help to punish it for its sins. The combat is also historically accurate, but we don't want to do that for the historical reasons of something. We want to do that for the immersion, and we want you to feel the sword in your hand. We want you to feel threatened by the enemies on the battlefield. We want you to fight for your life.
And I did ask Toby about the combat and apparently they have made it more accessible, but they're still kept that core kind of accurate medieval combat in the game, which I think is really cool because it's one of my favorite things about it. As far as uh, missile weapons go, we added new type of weapon. We added crossbows. Sick. Also some early firearms. Kingdom Come feels like the good old school RPGs. It will always surprise you what you can and cannot do. You know, you can be better in combat, you can be a sweet talking guy who talks his way out of problems. Oh, you can be a charming knight, you can be a thief, you know, a scoundrel. <laughs> Anything you do will be recorded, people will remember it. If they saw you do that, our crime system will react to that. For example, what? when you are, I don't know, drunk and naked, People comment on that on the street, and now you can also reply. You can tell them, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Or you can tell them, ah, piss off, man. If you do Love a lot that. of criminal stuff around the village, people will start to be suspicious. They will greet you differently. So try to make these little things collapse into like greater mosaic where your actions are really reflected. It will always surprise you what can be done in Kingdom Come. And we see Henry getting branded on the face here. So if you play as a scoundrel going around stabbing and thieving, you'll actually get branded as a criminal and people will respond to you differently. Before it was like you could kill an entire town and, and then after people respawn, no one would really care that much. But your criminality actually having implications is really going to make you think twice before making those kind of decisions. And also being able to respond in character to different NPCs allows you to role play even though you're playing a character called Henry. Oh, pebbles. I missed you. Oh yeah, alchemy. Living medieval times. We are moving to different places, so one map is taking place on the actual place that's called Bohemian Paradise. And it's really beautiful nature of it. He just said one map. Does that mean there's multiple maps you can visit? Because the game doesn't take place just around one area? Actual place that's called Bohemian Paradise. And it's really beautiful nature of it. Uh, quite unusual rocky formations all around. And then we are moving to totally different, rather urban countryside surrounding huge silver mining, very rich city. So there's this big city. The Gutenberg is a huge step forward for us and it was, I would say, biggest challenge in the game. Because uh, from those small outskirts and uh, small cities, you are really getting in the one of the richest cities in the medieval Europe. And it's really big. It's huge. It's even too big, in my opinion. <laughs> we are trying to go beyond that usual uh, muddy, dirty medieval world, dark ages where everyone is dying uh, from famine or on war. It was really like colorful. Like, uh, it wasn't dark at all. When I visited Warhol Studios, I spoke to one of the historians making the game, and she was saying, medieval games always portray peasants as just the dirty people, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Well, we have really beautiful environments. Like, players should go and explore all those, like, little woods and beautiful rocks and castles. The thing that I love about the game most is just wandering around, because yeah. the nature is really beautiful, it's, it's really serene, peaceful, and it's full of secrets. It looks real, it looks real. It actually looks like real life, it's crazy. Killer the music score. is a big part of the game. Yeah. Jan Valta is the composer as with the first game because I think he's awesome, he's genius. I've seen him live. Still gives me shivers. Something else. 
because it's always a passion project with Warhorse. They don't rush it. It's completely different to the modern day gaming industry. There's not many developers like this anymore. It's not just about the money. And if you can pull something like this off, it will be successful. And they're going to prove that again, I think. game you can experience something you cannot experience anywhere else. I think players will be really impressed by that. <laughs> My message to the fans would be you are in for a ride. Thank you for so. all your support. Please follow us on our journey to create something unique. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 will be released by the end of this year. See you in KCD2. Oh my god, the end of this year! Dude, that is so exciting. Now, if you guys want to watch my full breakdown of everything we saw here, you can check it out in the link below.